How you doing fam bam? This is Chris Mizo here with another video and I'm excited to share with you, well, not so excited because an issue happened to my very PC. While I was creating content, it just suddenly crashed. I got that blue screen of death. I was surprised, I was awed, and it turns out that the NVMe went bad. I'm sure this sounds like a familiar story to everybody out there that does run into PC issues. And that's why I always stress about backing up your information. It is very important to back up your information into another drive or even use a Cronus backup imaging because that is an excellent tool to use, especially when something like this happens. Luckily, I got a lot of my information backed up on my other drives, but Unfortunately, I lost that new content that I wanted to share with you, fam, fam, and that's not a problem because it's something I can easily recreate. So the very NVMe that I have in my PC that had my OS one here was the Rocket NVMe 4.0 by Sabrim. And it seems like this wasn't the first time this actually happened. I gave them a chance, so I sent them out a second time. And of course, now it's happened a third time. And so far, my experience with Sabrent hasn't been the greatest. Those more than likely send me a brand new drive, and hopefully their newer drives are a lot better compared to the original Sabrent rocket drives, because they do make some excellent drives, and I really hope that they bump up their quality since they made the new Rocket Plus drives. I can't say personally because I haven't tested it yet, but I did end up getting a brand new NVMe I'm going to share with you fam bam. and I'm also going to benchmark it, especially for those who are thinking about purchasing this very SSD because it's one of the best out there. We're going to install, end up installing a brand new NVMe and what I decided to purchase was a new, let me rip this open here, who doesn't like ripping brand new stuff. I got a new Samsung 980 Pro 2 terabyte drive. Definitely could use that extra space, especially for the all the content that I create out there. So let's open this up here. And as you can see, it looks like it is mostly sealed. May have to open it from the bottom, yeah. Oh no, it looks like it opens from the side. It looks like they have it sealed on the side here. So you want to open that up. There it is. Now, it's very important how they package their product. And wow, it's definitely a lot cheaper than I thought the way that Samsung was going to package it because it just simply comes just like this. Now I got to say, there's nothing wrong with it. It is very secure at this is not going anywhere. They can toss it, throw it, slam it. Doesn't matter because it is in there pretty good. And it's simply just a plastic case that just pops out just like this. And here it is. The new Samsung 980 Pro 2 terabyte drive right here. So we're gonna install this together. This will be my main C drive when I reinstall Windows into my PC. And I don't wanna put Windows 11 just quite yet, but because of its current bugs, I will reinstall Windows 10. With the brand new build that I am building, I will install Windows 11 on that machine. So compared to Sabrent's uh, drive here, how the way they packaged it, as you see, I have it right here. If I pull this out, they have this beautiful, beautiful casing but looks can be deceiving as this drive ended up failing on me less than a year. I think it was probably about six months or so, but they have a nice little package and then they have their NVMe kind of, their NVMe go into something like this. If you're planning to send out your NVMe on warranty, make sure you put it back in its original casing because then you don't get any callback saying that you didn't really package it well and this isn't the original packaging for your drive. That's why I keep a ton of boxes around. My wife hates it, and I can understand why. It just looks like a big mess, but it's pretty important to have, especially when something like this does happen. So without further ado, let's install this brand new MVME and see 
how well it performs. We'll run some sequential read speeds, sequential write speeds. We'll do the whole nine yards and I'll benchmark it, test it, see what kind of performance we can pull out of this very drive. So as you see here, I have my SSD installed here up here on the top. All I have to do is simply just pop this off. And if you want to see how I installed this vertical bracket, make sure you click the card above as I show you how to do it there. So all you have to do is take that off. Usually they'll have a screw here. If you don't have any of these like plastic cover clips. And then you just have to use a small Phillips head screwdriver to pull that off. Then all you have to do is simply just pull it out. So we'll open this up. Put this back just the way it was. Just like that. And now we'll install our brand new drive. And all we have to do is simply just slide it in. As you see to physically install a NVMe SSD is really not all too bad. So, Let's get started and install Windows on this very drive. As you see to install this very physical NVMe isn't really all too bad. Now we're going to install Windows next. Make sure you have your Windows 10 USB bootable drive ready to go. I have mine set on a Samsung Fit drive and it looks it looks something like this here. I have mine set right here, my Windows 10, and I will plug that in and I'll show you exactly how to boot it from this very USB. Now, if you don't have Windows 10 in a USB, or if you have a drive, or if you still have a optical drive where you can install Windows 10, you could do it that way too. Just make sure you have something to boot into, otherwise you're gonna have an issue trying to start your PC. All you have to do is simply put your bootable drive into something where you have access to, and just like that, you'll be good to go. So usually I keep my side panel glass open just in case if it was not installed properly. So all we have to do is power on the PC and enter the BIOS. Now in order to get to the BIOS for my PC is usually the F2 or escape key. And for your motherboard, it could vary or for your PC, it could be something different. Some are F3, some are F1 and some are F8. So make sure you pay attention to the boot screen so that way you know which button to push or which key to push to enter the BIOS or the boot manager. Now we safely enter the BIOS because I like to hit the F2 key so fast. Sometimes I'll get this load previous values. If that happens to you too, just cancel. And as you see the boot options, you wanna make sure to have boot option number one as your Samsung flash drive or whichever USB that you use that, ha that has your Windows OS in there. So after you're done, you can simply go to the exit side. And then you're gonna click save and change and reset. So all you have to do is once your PC resets, just wait for the Windows screen to come up and it'll come up right after it loads up. So you make sure to install Windows in the language of your country and just hit next. So what this means is if you have a digital license activation on your account, you can go through that way or you can go through the standard key. Because I have a digital license activation on my Windows, this is the what this is the way I will continue.
So the next step here is I'm gonna go into the custom install because of the emergency I had. I installed it on my PCI Express 3.0 NVMe instead of a 4.0. So I'm gonna clear that out and I, I will format, I'll show you how I'll format that out and switch it up to my Samsung drive. As you see, the new drive shows up. Make sure you click new for the unallocated space. Put in the size that you want and there, it's ready to go. Now I have everything set on my Intel drive and I will format that out. So now we're just gonna continue on drive zero as the default windows. and you simply just let it install. So after installs, make sure you don't try to boot back into the Windows 10 drive. You don't really have to. Just make sure you just let your PC do its thing. Just let it run on its own course until you see your OS come up. Because you saw that pop up of the boot manager, I'll show you how to remove it. So that way you don't have to worry about that ever happening to you again. So once you get to this screen, the basic screen, just continue to your country with your region. So I'm in the US, so I'll click yes. I'll skip the secondary layout for now. So the PC will restart. Just make sure you don't mess with anything else. So we'll be right back once Windows 10 comes back on. So you could set it up for your company or you could set it for personal use. I will set it up for personal use. So from here, you want to put your email in. Once you successfully log in, just make sure you create yourself a pin. Or if you don't want to, you can skip it. I like to only save my files on the PC because the OneCloud honestly isn't the best thing in my personal opinion. <laughs> So we'll be back once this several minutes pass. So once you log back into your Windows, because I already have Windows 10 already activated prior to reinstalling this drive, you will get your default desktop back. And now for the fun part, you gotta reinstall everything. And now we got Windows 10 installed, we could do some benchmarks and see exactly how well it performs. Now we have the SSD installed, Samsung software for their 980 NVMe should be right here into their browser. Wouldn't be too hard to find. And what we want to do is go under support and I'll make sure to have it down in the description box down below. So that way, if you need to download this very software, you can. More than likely it has firmware updates for it because it will affect the speed and performance of it. So we gotta go under tools and software. And what we'll need is Samsung's Magician software. We're gonna download it now. And once it installs, it looks like the latest update for it, Magician install version seven. So we'll open up this file. And so far it looks like the drive health is good. As you can see, you got the drive dashboard you got the drive details performance benchmark diagnostic scans performance optimization and over provision if you look on your left hand corner right here you'll see a button for update because on the right side this is just a help panel from what it looks like so just click update and now we'll click looks like we're on the latest update of samsung's ssd pro 2 terabyte now it has some pretty decent features on here. It tells you the temperature uh, is at 100 degrees. Uh, I guess currently it's at 51 degrees Celsius. I was gonna say it looked like 100 degrees Celsius, but so far I haven't seen it reach that type of level, but more than likely that's where the thermal throttling begins on that drive where performance gets affected. Now let's go to, you can go into performance benchmark here we can start it and see what kind of read speeds, sequential read speeds, write speeds. So far it's looking good. I have the fan speeds at normal speeds right now. So far it seems like the average is about 
6,200 megabytes of sequential read speed and 162,597 IOPS. So it looks like the test is completely done. And of course you can always go diagnostic scans, make sure everything is working okay. Also while it's doing this diagnostic scan, I will show you exactly what to do if you have a boot manager problem here. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna hit Windows R, you'll see a menu come up. And what we're gonna go into is a thing called sysdm.cpl. When you go into here, you're gonna go under advanced and you're gonna go under settings under startup and recovery. After that, you're gonna see something like default operation system, Windows 10, which is where I have it. And if you have a dual boot setup, you can uncheck it if you choose to, or if you wanna have a dual boot setup, you can check it to where something comes up and it gives you time to select the operating system. So all you have to do is set it right here and you'll be good to go. As you see, I already had the boot manager uh, completely off on my side. So nothing to worry about there. Okay, so it looks like the short scan is done. Looks like everything is okay on this drive. It is, it does perform slightly slower than my Saber Rocket drive, surprisingly. But at least what I'm looking for is more of the reliability aspect and more than likely, hopefully this will last a lot longer. Here are some pass mark numbers here. This is the performance test that I would like to share in the ADA 64 benchmark numbers as well. I also do have some other tests such as Crystal Dismark as you see here. And it seems like you get some pretty decent speeds out of this very drive. It may not be as quick as Sabrent Rocket's drive, but it certainly is very reliable. So the next test I want to show you exactly how hot this NVMe can get. So here are the temperatures that I did receive. The hottest that I did receive out of it is 58 degrees Celsius, which is really amazing, especially for how hot NVMe 4.0 can get. Now, I hope you found this content very useful. If you did, make sure you don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And also, if you know anyone else who wants a Samsung 980 NVMe, make sure you share this video with them. And also, if you want to join the big, wonderful fan band, make sure you go down and hit the subscribe button for more. And don't forget to hit the notification bell for all the newest updates. Make sure to follow my Twitter and IG handle as well. It is the same as my TikTok. And fam bam, guys, what do you think of Samsung's 980 NVMe? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Chris Mizo, signing out.